Hello and welcome to the first Mumberger Airport Information video report. The subject of this report is passenger air service development for regional airports. It is one of the most important commercial considerations for airport managers, as it is a key element that can make a smaller regional airport economically viable and better able to serve its communities. So what goes into a successful air service development program? Airports need to make a compelling case to airlines to convince them to start new routes, especially at airports that are not currently in their network. There are issues such as unknown markets, allocation of expensive aircraft and human resources. Airlines are very bottom line oriented and they often have short term expectations when it comes to return on investment or new services. We will illustrate a successful air service development program by using one regional airport as a case study. The region of Waterloo International Airport, which is about 70 kilometers or 42 miles west of Toronto's Pearson International Airport, Canada's largest international gateway. We spoke to the airport manager, an airline, a regional government leader and passengers in the wake of a breakthrough success in air service development the launch of twice daily regional jet service between Waterloo and Chicago O'Hare, connecting the local airport to a major US destination and via its hub there to the world. The successful air service development has happened despite the proximity of Waterloo Airport to the nearby airline hub at Toronto with its many domestic and global routes. A lot of hard work over a long period of time has gone into getting the airport where it is today, from a point where it had no air terminal and no commercial air services only 10 years earlier. Let's see how this was possible. We've spent a lot of effort and um, money on uh, understanding what our market is, and which was really key to, to everything we've done. Um, I would, I would say it's a, a really nice mix between business and pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, obviously some uh, some quite large uh, industries here in the region that does have a quite a high propensity for travel business-wise but yet we also have quite a, a wealthy community that does uh, like all Canadians enjoy their uh, their time down south and in mm -hmm. the sunnier climates in the winter and uh, and, and uh, different destinations as well in the summer for leisure. So it's quite a mix uh, between the two. Mm -hmm. Well, how does the proximity of uh, Pearson International Airport affect your efforts to draw travelers uh, to your airport and airlines as well? Well, it's, um, it's both good and bad. Um, you know, I liken it to um, if someone wants to buy a product, being a, an airline ticket uh, travel to somewhere, they can do that by going you know, an hour down the road on most days, some days uh, longer than an hour. So we have to work a little bit harder to, to try and get those people to, to use their hometown airport. And, and it's not difficult to do. People really do love the convenience of the smaller airports. So far, the airport's really nice. And I chose to fly out of here because I'm going to Ottawa today. And I thought it would be a lot faster to fly out of here rather than shuttle to, uh, to Toronto. I like it. It's close to home. The traffic is good. The parking is good. It's small. It's quick. It's convenient. I like it a lot. The airfares here were a little more expensive, but by the time you factor in a shuttle cost round trip, um, it's pretty even, and plus you gain a few hours of time as well. How closely do you work with the various sectors of the uh, community, including business organization, economic development offices, and so on? Yeah, that's uh, huge. Uh, very, very close. We, um, we have what's called our Airport Business Advisory Committee. And they're made up of, um, I think, about 20 to 25 uh, leaders of businesses, um, uh, educational institutions, chambers of commerce, um, those types of organizations, Communitech. Um, and we meet twice a year. We try to meet twice a year to... Uh, basically, it's a forum for us to reach out to these very influential people but also it's for them to give us direction on what are their needs, what are their travel needs, um, what should we be working on. And, and quite frankly, um, the first meeting that I attended some three years ago as the airport manager, I asked them point blank, uh, Northwest had just uh, suspended service to Detroit. They were quite, uh, some were quite upset with that. And I said, where, help me help you. 
where do you want to fly to? And Chicago was the the number one uh, suggestion. It's a huge hub. You can get anywhere in the world from there. Plus, there's a, a significant O&D travel market mm -hmm. to Chicago as well, which is uh, really key. Mm -hmm. and, and we had had some previous discussions with American. And also, American uh, sales team for Canada had been into a local tech company here in the region. And um, they asked, how can we get more of your business? And they told them, quite frankly, put airplanes in Waterloo. With our regional uh, sales um, I guess initiative, we kind of go with a boots on the ground approach where we have folks such as myself um, doing sales calls with the airport staff. So with Sandra McCauley and um, Chris Wood, we would actually go out and meet with, you know, some of the corporate entities in, in town as well as also the local travel agencies, mm -hmm. which I was surprised to learn, you know, there's over I think, 80 travel agencies within a 50 kilometer radius of just this airport. So there had been some sort of discussions at the sales level. Um, we had made some introductions with the network planners. Um, we had help from within American at the sales level to push as well, saying we think this is an opportunity. There are companies here that will use us if we put airplanes there. So that always helped, having an internal push. Mm -hmm. But also uh, the, the fellow we met with, um, at uh, one network conference, uh, he really liked what we had to say, and he liked the potential here. He liked the fact that um, you know there really there's no other option from the Waterloo region to the United States, so uh, they they would basically be uh, the only uh, U.S. transporter service. Um, not saying they will be forever, but uh, they are currently the only the only service, and they like that. But they also said that uh, Toronto is uh, routinely one of their no highest yielding markets in the system. So, so they understand these are the same people that are flying through Toronto. It's just we're making it easier for them. So, so they saw the real potential in it, and uh, we went back, did some further work, and um, they're here. One of the biggest battles one has when starting a new route is raising the airport awareness. You know, when people, when the general public are, you know. I guess have it ingrained in their mind that Pearson is the only option, you have a hard time swaying that opinion. So what we did was we had YKF put under the Toronto All Airports banner code and on our website and soon hopefully uh, that we'll have that on with all with passed through IATA so that we'll, it will go under all GDS systems such as Sabre. Mm -hmm. So when, when one looks up YTO or Toronto, they will see YKF as, a, as an option mm -hmm. rather than having to look for it manually. How do industry associations such as uh, ACI World and S ACI North America and others uh, help you in your development of the uh, market around the airport and the air services? They are helpful, absolutely. This is a, this is a success story uh, from Jumpstart. Uh, mm -hmm. This was where we met American, or I met American for the first time. Um, started a relationship almost three years ago and it continued uh, continues today. It's nice that they bring airports and airlines into one room and uh, you basically do a, have a speed dating. You can have separate meetings at night over dinner with people if you'd like to as well. You know, American uh, has commented a number of times that they have never encountered an airport uh, that has done as much to, to help the service along that, that we have. and. Now, we really understand here that the more successful the airlines are, the more successful we are as an airport. Mm -hmm. So so we're going to do everything in our power to make sure those airplanes are full. We basically have a marketing budget that we spend promoting the airport every year. And really, in order to promote the airport, you have to promote the carriers that are here as well. We do do some general aviation uh, promotion. Uh, things like that to attract the corporate uh, clients and, and um, you know the private pilots but most of our budget is spent on uh, the commercial side so so we work very closely with our with both partners WestJet and, and Bearskin as well to to help them as much as we can mm -hmm. and uh, I think they're very appreciative. How about your infrastructure development? Airlines would like to see certain things you would like to see a revenue build up first before spending again on infrastructure. How how's that? Yeah. Uh, are you keeping pace of uh, Air, airlines? Are uh, you know they're they're funny in a way because they want the um, 
they want the upgraded infrastructure, but they don't want to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've done a, a fairly good job of keeping up on uh, on things. We've done quite a bit out there. You know, not every inch of asphalt out there is under five years old. Uh, we have a new, a brand new uh, maintenance facility. We have, you know, fire service. So those are all things that we've had, we felt we needed to do in order to be in this game of, uh, of commercial service. The passengers love the convenience and the ease. Uh, you know, it doesn't take, you know, if you walk 200 steps between your car and the, the airplane, is, uh, that's, a lot, that's about it. So, mm -hmm. And, you know, you check in in a couple minutes, your security, through friendly security mm -hmm. staff, and you can have a, a drink now or a meal in, in our licensed restaurant at Beyond Security, and you walk out to the airplane. So, um, so yeah, they, I don't think infrastructure plays a, a role. I think it could if we didn't have some of the things that um, that the airlines mm -hmm. expect, but, but we have everything that they're looking for and more. We're always looking to upgrade the airport. We have a long-range capital program for it. We rebuilt the uh, terminal more recently to handle bigger loads, passenger loads. Uh, we've actually expanded it since the original uh, work done there. Uh, we've redone the main runway recently. Uh, we're looking at, with NAV Canada, perhaps a new tower going in the facility. And in addition to that, there's also some industrial sites around the airport that are being developed. Our, our big thing now is, you know, we serve Western Canada, we serve the United States through a major hub, we serve the business market of Ottawa and Montreal. Uh, we think there's a huge opportunity for a flight to Halifax. Um, Halifax, probably. I go to Halifax quite a bit. Um, WestJet is doing extremely well here. Uh, they've been here now five years. Their flights are continually growing year over year. The, the shoulder periods are really starting to flatten out now. It's pretty busy all year now for, for WestJet, where it used to be peak pockets where it was busy, and, and now it's, uh, it's pretty steady all year round. So, so we're hopeful that WestJet's uh, interested in doing a little bit more. Uh, they have a, a nice infrastructure here as well with their staff, so we think it, uh, it only makes sense for WestJet to add some service. Vacation charters, I think, is a, is a no-brainer that, um, you know, it, it just seems to be the, that sort of part of the industry has really gone through a big consolidation, so, so it's, you know, we're, we're a little small for some of the players, um, Air Transat, for example, they're uh, large airplanes. Um, Sunwing does serve this airport uh, minimally one a week uh, for the winter season. So, so we think there's some opportunities for that. And, and you know, even maybe there's some opportunities with American to do some some uh, seasonal service to Miami or, or things mm -hmm. like that with the larger airplanes. I think to me it's just about being able to get a connecting flight. I don't really expect to be able to fly everywhere from here, but if I can fly from here to a major hub, then I'm happy with that. So I hope to see more American airlines in here so that I can fly to places in the States. So r really there's lots of opportunities. Um, we continue to talk about uh, the, the corporate charters, so that's we're, we're focusing a, a little bit on that as well. So. Mm -hmm. I have family here in Kitchener and so I've, I'm based out of Vancouver and it's really nice to be able to fly right from Vancouver to here uh, using uh, using the airport. Uh, saves me so much time and, and uh, effort. If I had to go to Toronto all the time it's extra money and then I have to transport myself back from Toronto to here and then back to Toronto again. It's, it's a lot of time and effort. So to fly here my family can just drop me off and I fly back to Vancouver no problem at all. This case study of Waterloo Airport shows that it takes long hard work and sometimes years of negotiations with airlines before new routes are established. It takes solid data and traffic projections. It sometimes takes risk sharing programs such as revenue guarantees for a specified period of time. It certainly requires appropriate air terminal facilities and equipment. But most of all, it takes the support of the entire local community and government to make a compelling case to airlines before they are prepared to allocate resources to new markets and new routes. Only in combination with all of these elements has this and other successful airports accomplished the goal of connecting their communities to more parts of the world and thereby contributing to the local economic prosperity. Thank you very much for watching this report.